Oh, hi there. My name is Takras. Well, not really. My name is Andre, but my nickname is Takras. Uh, usually I do reviews in Norwegian, but I just wanted to try out the English market to see how it works out. So, for starters, I want to uh, play Imperial Settlers with this one from uh, Portal Games. It's designed by Ignacy Chevitek. Uh, but before I uh, go on, I just want to ask you for one thing. Please, please, please give me some feedback on this. I, I really want to know what you think about my review. Okay? So let's go. Hello. Imperial Settlers is a game about the civilization building. You start up from scratch, like you normally do, and then you build up your empire. So, of course, you have the Romans, naturally, and barbarians, Egyptians, and Japanese. Now, this is the only thing you get that is uh, remotely a board game. O also, you get the scoring sheet. Uh, otherwise, this is a plain card game, and you build your uh, tableau of cards to expand your empire, and you see it grow uh, physically. And that is kind of neat. Each faction comes with a male and female character, no difference there, but they do have different abilities. Like the Japanese, they get four people, one sword and one wood, and the Egyptians get three people, one sword and one gold, and barbarians get five people and one sword, and Romans get two people, one sword, one wood and one stone, so very different. This last symbol here is just shield and everyone gets one shield, so no difference there. What you do in this game is very simple. You have cards in your hand, and the cost for the, to build the card is uh, on the top left. Otherwise, you have special deals here on the bottom, only for your cards. Because each faction comes with their own faction decks. And this is really cool because they all have very different abilities. So each faction plays very, very differently. Like the Romans that try to claim other countries and take what, what is yours. Uh, Egyptians spend gold and get gold and just do trade stuff. And the barbarians want to raise stuff, they just take it and s exploit everything. While the Japanese, they gather food and have samurais to, to protect in their kingdom. So it's very, very differently depending on what faction you play. On your space, you have three rows. You have production, feature and action. So each row is like this, on both sides. Uh, this is a side for the common cards. The common cards is a deck that every player has access to. Otherwise, it is only your faction card, which only you have access to. And so, uh, each production card, the cards that give you something each, each round, that do stuff, they go on the top row. Uh, features, which helps you develop your, your um, empire as you go, go in the middle. And actions, there are special actions that only you can access, they go on the bottom. Uh, so, this size is for the common deck, and this side is for your faction deck, which is only your deck. As you see, all the bottom here have some special icon to make a deal, and this does not exist on the common deck. The game lasts for five rounds. After that, it's over and you count the points. So what you want to do during those five rounds is to build as much as possible of your own faction cards. Uh, the common cards will help you produce some small stuff, but they are also not worth so much. So you want to have your own faction deck. Also, the common deck is very vulnerable to attacks, because you can use swords, send your armies to attack other people's common cards and take their resources, while the opponent loses the card like so, flips it over and can't access the special action which is inside. So, it's a very interactive game, you have to uh, be aware of your opponent and what they do and what they have. And there we have one problem with the game. What do they have? Because I had full access to my cards. I can see it. Uh, it's a nicer overview. However, what does he have? I can't read the text. Uh, action spend one feet. Uh, what? What? Oh, okay. I, I can't do this for all the cards and look. Uh, does, it doesn't work. Also, if you have four players, they will. Yeah, you can't. It's impossible to have a good overview of what the other players have. And some cards they have. Let's then take away your faction card from the game. And it's crucial to know that they have this card so you can maybe take it away from them before they can use it against you. So that is one minor flaw, well not minor, but major flaw of the game is the overview. But once you play it a few times, you kind of get the sense of what they have and it starts working. So, yeah, it, it, is, it is minor and it, it major. I can't decide, I can't decide. 
Also, you may argue that the factions are unbalanced, but that depends on how you play them. If you play each faction the same way, you will lose, definitely. Uh, barbarians need to focus on having a lot of uh, people around them, while the uh, Romans need to have a lot of combat and be prepared to uh, take what is theirs, <laughs> rightfully, right? Uh, and the Japanese need to uh, spend their food and their resources correctly as well. They, they play extremely differently, so you might feel that the game is very unbalanced, that the one faction is better than the other, and, but the truth is, it can go either way. Sometimes you just get a lot of points with the one faction and not the other one. Like uh, the Egyptians, they can score a lot of points if you get the correct cards at the correct time. And of course, it is a card game, so you need to have the cards at the correct time, but usually you will be able to produce a great uh, civilization and get just what you need to, to win the game. So, what I like about the game is it's based on the 51st State Edition, and it kind of reminds me of uh, Race for the Galaxy as well. But each card has several uses. You can build it, and in the case of the common cards, you can raise it to gain the resources. Uh, you can make a deal with them, and you can use it as foundation. So, each card provides with a lot of options, depending on what you have available and what you want to do. But despite this minor slash major uh, flaw with the game, the game is excellent. It's well balanced if you know how to play the factions, and it provides a lot of thinking and interactivity that you want in a game. Uh, the game can last a while, the four players. It might last two, maybe three hours, so it is a bit long. For two players, it's excellent. It lasts uh, one, under one hour. And for one player, yes, you can play one player. So if you want, if you like solo games, this also works great as a solo game. I have many solo uh, sessions uh, beneath my belt, also the campaign mode. So this game provides great uh, fun for one to four players, but I recommend two or three. Three is a good number, though it takes a while, but two is excellent, and one is also excellent. So just, I don't like four in this game for some reason, but it just takes too long, but it provides an Overall, great experience, and I can I look forward to the expansions, especially the Atlanteans, which, what Atlanteans? That blew my mind. 